get to step six and seven, we begin each week we do a review. And the first step is the foundation of recovery. And we said we was going to do three things. Basically, number first, what is the problem? And it's an Alcoholics Anonymous that we can find the exact nature of our problem. In the big book, Dr. Silkworth explains the problem is twofold. We have a physical problem, a physical allergy, and a mental obsession. And these two things together make us powerless over alcohol. And I think as we say in great detail, when I come to Alcoholics Anonymous, I didn't understand the exact nature of my problem. I knew that alcohol had something to do with it, obviously. And I think that many alcoholics realize that, that alcohol is involved, but how is alcohol involved? In order to solve a problem, we have to get to the exact nature of it so we can deal with it. And for many years, you know, I thought all I had to do was just to quit drinking. And I knew after many years that I couldn't drink. I didn't understand. I hadn't heard the physical allergy. He hadn't explained it to me in great detail. But when they came and explained it to me in detail, I learned that I had a craving each time I drank, and that was abnormal and never occurred in the average tempered drinker. And therefore, you know, I finally they explained to me why I couldn't drink safely. I can drink, but I can't drink safely. If I took a drink tonight, I, I would experience this phenomenal craving. The same thing would occur. But that's just part of my problem. Then understanding that was fine. But the main problem of the alcoholic sin is in his mind rather than the body. It wasn't the fact that I couldn't drink. My main problem was I couldn't quit drink, quit trying to drink. You know, the alcoholic, he talks about this obsession, and as we go into step two, it talks about restore us to sanity. And once we learn that these two things we were powerless, then our step two talks about a power working on this obsession. You know, restoring us to sanity. It says when it comes to alcohol, in all other areas, the alcoholic is, we can make good sound judgments in our lives. Like we go to work, we, we, uh, I mean, we're all alcoholics doing some great things. I mean, they, they're involved in all facets of life, doing many, many complicated things. You know, it's hard to see how a guy could go to the moon <laughs> and he, he, but he, could, he has, didn't have such enough not to drink something that was killing him. You know what I mean? But this is man. You know, we, we have great minds, but when it comes to alcohol, we're quite insane. Uh, they didn't say we was crazy. And insane don't mean you're all gone. It just means you ain't all there. You know, we got, a little <laughs> we got one little piece missing. When it comes to alcohol, that's the little piece. And we says we come to believe that a power greater than ourselves, and I love the word, can restore us to sanity. You know, we can put this back. So power, working on the obsession, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves. We're powerless, and step two says this, power is the answer. And if we have these two, we have come to these two conclusions, and this is progress because this puts the alcoholic in position for something for the first time in his life. You know, from through the, through the first 100 people that this was passed down, this information was passed down, down, down from them to us. And for the first time, it, it gives the alcoholic an opportunity. <coughs> for the first time, if an alcoholic has these two sets of information, if he arrives, if he sees that this is his, if his problem is powerless, and if he can see, can see, can believe that this power can restore him to sanity, then he's in position for our recovery. And this is this is problem solving. The first thing you do in a problem is find what is the problem, what is the solution, and then you then you lay out a plan and program of action to find this power. And it, and the first step in this is step three. And step three says we stand at a turning point. And we make a decision. We choose between this side or this side. And that's quite obvious. You know, and it says that this is each, each individual decision. And we have to choose, make a decision. And if we make this decision for this power, 
And quite naturally, we have to turn over our power. It says we have to turn over our will if we want to find this power. You know, and we have, a, you know, we have self-will. Uh, we've been living off of this thing all our lives. Um, and we alcoholics are, uh, we, we have a lot of that, by the way. And that seems to be the root of our problem. So we make a decision to turn our world and our lives with care of God as we understand him. And then we go to work uh, on removing the things that block us off from this power. Uh, and so the next steps, the first step in doing that, after we make the decision, it says the decision is very vital and critical, but it would have no permanent effect unless we go to work to remove the things that block us off. And so in step four, we start, we start the inventory process of identifying these things. And this is, this is a process of step four. And once we identify these things in step four, we're going to then talk to another individual about them and refine them a little bit in step five. And then after we talk to another individual about them in step six, we're going to become willing to let them go. And in step seven, we're going to ask God to remove them. We can see how these steps interact in one little gradual process. And then the whole foundation of six and seven as we get to the night is step four. Because as we went through step four, we had to list and analyze. And this says we had to find the value of these things. It's like taking a commercial inventory. We compared ourselves with a, with a commer- uh, business. And we are a business, we said. And we are... Um, we, got, we are about the business of staying sober, or of being happy and contentment. And this is the most important business in human life. Uh, it's not in... Uh, uh, you know, most of the time we forget about our business and get involved in everybody else's business and get involved in our job or get involved in our profession and forget all about forget about our business. And I never did really in my life uh, do much about my business. I always fooled with everybody else's business. <laughs> and a business that takes no inventory will go broke. And it did. I, it went broke. And if you're drinking alcohol or taking drugs to, to, to prop up your business, you got a bad, you got some bad business. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, it, this is something, it just ain't right. So I had to, in this inventory process, I went through and, and went to these sheets that were in the big book, using the outline in the big book. I inventoried the, the gross of handicaps, and they talked about resentments, and we listed and analyzed those resentments. And in those uh, the resentments, we saw uh, what people did to us, and uh, who they were, and what caused it, and we saw which part of self was affected. Then we saw what within our character allowed these things to happen. And as we examined that more, with more and more, we found out it was not to other people's fault. You know, most of every, every resentment that we ever have and every fear and every harm we do to other people is caused by that inherent characteristic in, that's in us. You know, that's what set the ball rolling. You know, it's the thing that within us that actually triggered that resentment. For over the years, we have blamed that on people so long that, you know, when someone does something, we blame it on them, blame it on them, and justify ourselves. We, you know, I was just there being good, and they did that to me. But the truth was, you know, we set the ball rolling. And we played this over and over so much, justifying ourselves, uh, you know, excusing our wrong and involving other people that we can hardly see that. But when we go through the inventory process, we, we get these things out in paper. We see the exact nature of our problem. In step five, we can discuss that with another human being. You know, the exact nature of my resentments was my own selfishness, dishonesty, inconsideration. My my own frightness. These character defects, that was the exact nature of my fears. That was the exact nature of the harm that I caused other people. It was never their fault. You see, we were created as God. We were created by God to be free people. We were created free whether we like it or not. You know, we, we give our lives away, but we were created free. Now, God didn't create us to where our happiness is in the hand of someone else's. It's in our own hands. But as we give our lives away on a day-to-day basis, 
as we start getting into resentments and fear, we turn our lives over to the thing we resent. We turn our lives over to the thing we fear. You know, I had a lot of people I didn't like, and I just turned my life to them every morning. And we get so good at this. You know, alcoholics don't have to work in resentments. You know, in fact, you'd be automatic. Yeah, I got so far, um, I could do uh, I could see people driving down the street and just resented them, didn't even know them. You know, I mean, I could, you know, if they looked at me, I could say, I know what they're saying. You know? <laughs> and if they spoke, said, how are you? I said, they didn't mean that. <laughs> if they didn't speak, I was mad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and we, we just, uh, you know, we just live off of these resentments. And we live off of these fears. We can't see anything, you know, any other way. So, once we get these things down on paper, then we take this to another person. And this is a essential thing. I think beautiful how step five lays right in there between the inventory and this going to work process. Because, you know, if we just did the inventory, we might make, you know, we haven't been honest with ourselves all our lives. We said that we talked about the alcoholic can't be honest with himself. He he has to be a con artist to be an alcoholic. There's no way you can have any honesty and destroy your life like we do. So we will we, con everybody else in the greatest con job we've done on ourselves. And so why, how can it possible that step four, even though we made this decision to turn our will and our life to the care of God, we, we have to have, you know, to do the inventory, we have to take step three. I mean, there's no way an alcoholic can take step four without taking step three. Because he has to have something to go through this facade and this conning. How could he take a searching, fearless, immoral inventory without step three? But even with that, just the beginning, he still can't be as honest with himself. He's as honest with, as he can be at that time. And that's all, that's all we can be today, as honest as we can be. We're not honest. We're honest as we can be. And we only know, and the truth is just as good as I see it. You know what I mean? But, so we, uh, we have to carry this to another individual. And in step five, we carry this to another individual. He can look at these things, and he is not involved in our life. And he's also been through the same process. You know, if we go to someone who's been through the program, knowledgeable, our sponsor, he's went through this process. And we thank God we have many people around today who can go over, these, go over our inventory with us. And as they go through our inventory, they can look at these things. You know, they, they weren't involved in them. And I'm sure that as they go through the inventory, they're going to make some changes in our inventory. You know, they're going to say, well, they're going to question you about this. So this resentment here, do you think that was caused by this part of self or was caused by this part of self? And I'm sure that they're going to improve on our inventories. The changes are they're going to find, well, this character effect was involved in this one. And they're going to get to the exact nature of each one of the things on our list. So the, 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 the step five is a very pro positive process. Because it says after we get this, you know, we get some of our greatest relief after step five. But then after we do that, this brings us to step five. We'll, we'll inventory those things. And this is why the inventory process is so important when we look at step six and seven. You know, because there's no way we could work six or seven unless we, unless we found the value of these things in our lives. We have to know the value. And once we go through these things in our own inventory, then go through, go through them with another individual, and we're burned in our mind the real value of these things in our lives. We can't fool ourselves about values. We're looking at the stock and trade. We're looking at what we trade off each day. You know I mean? This is what our lives are today. Our lives today is based on the thoughts that we trade off each day. And we alcoholics, he says, we got some unsellable goods. We got some stuff won't nobody buy. You know what I mean? Nobody buys into that but us. And we, each day, my life is based on the thoughts that I produce. Um, you know, I always walk around waiting for some good luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I said, wait for my ship to come in. My pier hadn't been built yet, you know. <coughs> but what are the thoughts that we trade off each day? And if we, if we, if we went through, we didn't know. Because we hadn't inventoried our stock. To me. 
After we inventoried our stock, we talked it over with another individual. Now we're ready to go back in business at six and seven. You know what I mean? We're ready to open the store up. You know what I mean? We're ready to talk about, you know, what, we, what we're going to hold back and what we're going to, and this is what six and seven is all about. What am I willing to let go of? What am I willing to let go of? And I know that, you know, and as we look at, and we can only grow based on that fact, by the way. Everybody wants to grow. Everybody wants something good, but nobody don't want to get rid of nothing. <laughs> everybody wants something good. But, we, you know, we're talking about if you're 100% there, and that's like I woke up this morning. Um, when I wake up in the morning, this thing comes on. I mean, it's full. I mean, it just comes, boom, you know. And it's on. And I don't have no empty spots all day. You know, like people say, well, I, well, my minds don't go blank. My mind is full all day of something. Good or bad. <laughs> right? It's full all day. So if I want to get something new in it, in my mind, I'm going to have to take something out. Okay? And that's why I did the inventory. Because if I hadn't done the inventory, I wouldn't know the value. I wouldn't know which one to take out and which one that I needed. This is why the inventory is the foundation of this process. And by going through my inventory, I found out I had a lot of bad stock in trade. And I, I found out, I seen the value of the th type of thinking that I had. I see the damage in process in my life when I read it through my inventory and analyzed it. So now I should be willing to uh, let go of us. And then my book says that, you know, sometimes it says all through these steps there's prayer in each step. No, it's not a do-it-yourself thing. It says we ask God to help us be willing. You know, we, we know that the alcoholic is not we We have strong-willed individuals. But we ask God to help us be willing. So in step six, and I think step six and seven is really the two twos. It looks to me, I, I kind of see, you know, it don't, we don't need a lot of instructions for step six and seven in the big book. There's two paragraphs, two short paragraphs in the book. And I probably the reason we don't, they are not really, uh, uh, when we look at them as twos, they are kind of crude twos. They're sort of like a pick and a shovel. You know, I'll go to, you go to a hardware store and buy some of them fancy tools. They'll give you some instructions, but I ain't never seen instructions on a pick and a shovel. <laughs> I mean, you, you're just supposed to know how to use that thing if you buy it, you know. And there ain't no easy way to do it. It's a simple, but it's very simple, but they're very hard. And this is what step six and seven are. It's where we really, the bill said it in 12 and 12, this is where we separate the men from the boys. This is what a quality of life is. I think that's what's so, fan, so, so great about Alcoholics Anonymous that we in the program, we all remain our own individuals. And we're, in kind of, we're individual people and personalities, and that's great. Because each person can work to his degree, and each person, can, each, each person has his different desires and wants in his life. Okay. And when you come to AA, you see all type of people. If some people choose to work one way and a different way, and this is a, all of them are right. You know, we got all kind of people in AA, all kind of different quality, quality of their lives, and they are all, it's a, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no standard in AA. So we got some people in AA that's happy, and you see them smiling all the time, they got a sparkle in the eye, and we see a few of those people around. Right? Yeah, we see some people in AA that's kind of mediocre. Some days they're pretty good and some days they ain't, you know. And we see some people in AA that you'd like to buy a drink. You know, they really, <laughs> it looks so miserable. It looks so miserable you say, hey, man, I'd like to buy you a drink. Yeah. But each and every, he's got his right, this, he's got his right to be that way. You know, if he wants to be a grouch, that's fine. You know? And I have no reason to criticize him because he's all right. That's what he wants. This is where he chose to work. He chose to work to that point. See, I don't know where that man started. Um, so each and, of us, each and one of us has these two tools to fashion our lives. And what this is all about, the step six, is what are we willing to let go of? You know, we've got to create some room. Now this program is, 
all through the program, if we looked at the steps, we hear people saying, you got to get something, you got to get something. I would like to look at it a lot different. Now, the steps say, take away, remove the things from me which are objectionable. It says, take away my difficulties. The steps all talk about removing things from our lives. And we can remove things from our lives, and they will be placed with something that is the opposite. And it's all up to us. What are we willing to let go of? You know, God had this covenant with man, and, and God's not going to come in and take anything out of our lives. He's not going to come and force anything. What are you willing to let go of? And he'll replace based on what you're ready to let go of. It's just simply what step seven is all about. You know, God will put no more in than you can take out. And that's your life. And he respects us. He's, he respects, he will not cross that line. You know, and I, I, I had a lot of problem with that. You know, if you don't take an inventory and you don't know the simple, if you don't know really what you need, if you haven't seen the values, you can't really work step six and seven. What I hear a lot of people take, they think that you can just go up and God at step six and seven and say, fix me up. <laughs> and he said, well, what do you want to fix? Well, just give me the twenty nine ninety five special, you know. <laughs> You know, he don't, he's, he's, he's a Pacific guy. You know, he wants to know. What are you, you know, he, he, he talks about your prayers. He talks about the demon. What are you willing to let go of? And step six is these things, as we let go of these things, then we ask God to remove our shortcomings. And I actually, if we look at, we can look at step six. It's real simple. Step six. And seven, he says, when you work one, you have worked the other. And they do work, in a way, as twos. Because as we give up things on this side, as we give up things on this side, we find out that we can grow on this side. As we give up some of our shortcomings, we find that it can be placed by the opposite. And, it's all, and we have seen the damage and effect of these things. We've seen how they destroyed our lives. We've talked these things over to other people. So now we should be willing to let go of some of these things so they can be replaced with the positive things in our life. You know, uh, if we look at six and seven and watch them unfold, uh, we see that as we give up these things, we have to force ourselves over here. It's, it's, not a, it's a very difficult thing. And how do we change? We change by, by working against ourselves. And this is very difficult to do. It's very difficult to work against yourself. But that's the way you change. You will never change by doing what you want to do. Tell me. If you do what you want to do, you will always be the same. You change by making yourself do the things you don't want to do. Everybody, you know, people say, well, I just, I, just, I said, well, what do you do? If you keep on giving in to their old thoughts, and when these thoughts come to our minds, or emotions act come, to, come into our minds, we have to buy into them. We have to lend the actions to these emotions. When they come up in my life, I've got to put the actions to them, and the resentment comes up, I've got to get off into that resentment. Boy, and I just went on automatically, zoop, right on with it. And used to love to be in those resentments and share them with other people. <laughs> Tell me. Boy, somebody would, I'd be going to work some morning, somebody would cut in front of my car. Boy, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'd cuss him and talk about his his his, his relatives and his <laughs> ancestors, <laughs> and then follow him down. You know, like I said, follow him down the freeway, way past your cutoff. <laughs> <laughs> and then go to work. You know, and hey, let me tell you, you know, you're right in the clock, and the other guy's up. Let me tell you what I just happened to me. Boy, this guy over here, I mean, almost killed me. You've got to make it a little worse, you know. <laughs> Messed your whole day up. See, I did this. That man didn't really do this. I allowed this to happen. So I step, I have, now that I didn't know this, and I've seen how damaging that was in my life. Those are the things that caused me to drink. Those things that caused me unhappiness. But you know, I've been doing these things so many, many years. You know what I mean? 
these old emotional habits is ingrained. So it's going to be very difficult. I and mean, this is this is what I am, you know. See, a personality is just a just a a, a, a group of, of thought processes that we have worked at over a period of time, and that's my personality. <laughs> And I have packed a bunch of garbage, a bunch of unsaleable ideas into my personality. And I have worked at it and, and ingrained these things in, in and in, day after day, month after month, year after year. And this is who I am. You know I mean? This is the kind of thing I'm trading off each day. And now I've got to change. I've got to change. Ain't it? I wonder, I've got to change. So if I don't change, I'm going to go back to drinking. So it's very difficult to change. This is not an easy thing. But then it is. You know, uh, how did I get the personality I got? I worked at it. <laughs> you know, I, I worked at it. <laughs> I just didn't do it one day. Hell, I worked it in day in, day out, day in, day out, and day out. And now i got to work the other way. i got to work against myself now. See? i got to work against myself. And these, each day, you know, as, and I watch these things, as these old ideas, as my mind, I get up in the morning and it says, these little signs will help says think, think, think. That's a good little sign. I used to, <laughs> I used to didn't know what think, think, think meant. I said, that's a dumb sign. But it means don't feel, feel, feel. <laughs> it means use your head. It, and it says, uh, uh, easy does it. First things first. Kind of organize your life. Slow things down a little bit. Because after all, you're wrong most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the guy said, yeah, it's just fun. Said, well, what's wrong with my life? He said, we're going to start with all of it, and then we'll find out if you got anything good. <laughs> but, and as these things come up, we, we, don't, we, don't, we take ourselves off, I like to say, we take ourselves off of the old automatic process for a while, since we know we're wrong. Everything we respond to wrong. Instead of just responding automatically, someone would stop and look at it. Easy does it. First things first. And when our mind produces a thought, let's see if that's what we want to do. You know, let's analyze it. The chances are, you know, it's wrong. And we have to we have to lend the actions to that. As the mind produces these thoughts, we have to buy them with action. And if we quit buying into them with action, we see that they're wrong and don't buy into them, our mind will feed us something better. You know, mind's got, we got great minds. Alcoholics got great minds. But our minds have us living off of garbage. You know I mean? uh, the good stuff is uh, untouched. <laughs> Most of it is going to go to graveyard. You know? So, as we don't, as we willing, what are we willing? If we don't, we willing to let go of that. That's step six. If we don't, we don't want, we don't want action. What good is that? We've seen the value of it in the inventory. We've seen the damaging effects to our lives. We've seen it don't make us no money. It keeps us unhappy. So it ain't good business to buy. That's a bad, that's a bad stock in trade. And as we fail to buy into that stock in trade, it will be, the, the book says, the old ideas will be cast to one side. And a new set of motives will begin to dominate our mind. See, we'll get a new thought process the same way we got an old one by working at it, by working against ourselves. Now, you know, it's very hard, and this, it didn't say this, is that this was simple, but it's not easy. It's easy to do what you want to do. Like the guy said, if you always do what you always done, you always get what you always got. That's obvious. <laughs> yeah, you will. That's how you know. That's the law. And it's just like if we look at these things, and on a daily basis, as my mind brings these things up, you know, I say, "Oh no, we did, we did that the other day. You know, and that didn't work." I mean, after all, we need to learn a little lesson. And you, we alcoholics, have, we got fantastic minds. I mean, I, I've never seen a dumb alcoholic. I see alcoholics do some dumb things. You know? <laughs> but we got fantastic minds. That's the one I tell all the time about these. But that guy that was going to transplant to brains, you know, they transplant a lot of things. And the hearless, this guy found out he could transplant brains. 
And uh, this old fellow was having a lot of problems, and he went to the doctor. He said, well, doc, I'm having a little trouble. He said, I just can't think too well. And he said, I believe I need a new brain. He said, you think you can give me a new one? He said, well, I don't know. He said, well, let me run some tests, and, and we'll see. So they run a test on him, and after a few days, he doctor come in and see him and said, all oh, the tests were fine. He said, you, you have an age, but uh, you have good physical shape, shape. I believe you'll be a good prospect for a brain transplant. He said, what do you have? What kind of brain can you give me? He said, well, come on in the showroom. I'll show you what we got. <laughs> and he went there in the showroom. He said, we got this one here. He said, uh, this is a, a lawyer's brain. He said, it's pretty good and pretty good shape. And said, that would cost you about $20,000. And he said, well, you got anything else? He said, yeah. So we got this uh, doctor's brain over here. He said, it's in fine shape. And it'll run you about 50000 He said, okay. He said, you got anything else? He said, yeah. I got one special case over here. He said, I got a brains of an alcoholic over here. And he said, it's in real good shape. And he said, it'll cost you about $100,000. He said, well, I can't figure that out. He said, why? 20000 for a lawyer, 50000 for a doctor, and 100000 for the brain of an alcoholic. He said, man, the alcoholic's brain is brand new. It ain't never been used. <laughs> <laughs> and truly, that's true. You know, we have never used the real good part. You know, we were living off of our emotions. We never used our brains. You will never use it. Never use it. So in step six, well, we, 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 we can, and, and we have, we have, you know, we have an emotion in life. Our emotions are just fine. Emo a certain amount of emotions are part of the human life. Uh, if we didn't have this, we didn't have our emotions, we wouldn't be complete human beings. But it's not, you ain't supposed to live off of your emotions. You know, suppose you run a business off of your emotions. That's what we're doing. Suppose you run a bank off your emotions. Suppose when somebody comes in and says, I want to borrow 100000 you say, I feel like you're an honest man. <laughs> and you didn't take no credit statement. Man, you wouldn't be in banking business long. And that's what we're doing with our life. Now, we don't want to, we want to keep some of that. But we want to be serenity, a good, healthy living as well balanced people. You know what I mean? People that have a, and that's why none of us can be perfect. It's to be like on a teeter. But we all, we just live in all one sided, you know. And we want to be well balanced. So, what, what, only way we can grow this way, what are we willing to give up over here? And in step four, we should have seen the damage and effect of these things. And it's all about uh, the growing is. One of the great writers in the book, talk, in the big, big book, talks about growing is about daily dying. Dying daily. You know what I mean? What are you ready to give up? You know, everybody wants, wants something better, but what are we really, what price are we willing to pay? It's just like a, a grain of corn. You know, if we want to get a, a beautiful stalk of corn with some beautiful ears on it, uh, one stalk has got to die. I mean, one, one kernel of corn has got to die so that stalk can grow. Something we got to give up something. That's the same way in life. The only thing we ask to give up is the things that's damaging to our lives. You know, uh, for the real valuable thing. But these things are, are really good to us. You know, first time you know, early in the program, you know, I was. You no, know, we all call, we were afraid we we're going to get too good. I don't. That's my, I don't know. I, I don't know why we all face with that. You know, uh, I just didn't want to get too good. You know. But the, once we see these things, that we give up, as we give up fear, we, we start having courage in our life. And our book talks about we can almost see the absence of some of these things within our personalities, such, such as tolerance. Tolerance is almost, it's there, but it's so short in our lives because it's, it's overrolled with resentment. The tolerance is short in our lives. You know, love is short in our lives. It's almost non-existence. But it's there. And love is simply, you know, the basic, our concern for another individual's welfare. 
It doesn't mean have anything to do with sex. Uh, most of us, you know, but love is just a concern for another individual's welfare. And, 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 and as an alcoholic, most alcoholics don't have a concern for other people's welfare. And love can, begins at home. And most, uh, most alcoholics don't have enough concern for their own welfare. And how can they be concerned for somebody else if they're not concerned for themselves? He said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Be concerned about your neighbor as you are about yourself. If you're not concerned about yourself, then you can't be concerned about your neighbor. And this is, a, this is a natural thing. This is the bond, the thing that bonds man together as a society. And when we don't have this ability on an individual basis, then we can't fit into society. You know, we, we, can't, it can't, we don't seem to be able to fit in with people. Because, because basic concern is a healthy, healthy quality of a life to enable us to function and interact with other people. And, and, and people that over here are short of the, that natural ability or that thing that we need. When I come to Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, I, I was short of this. And they said, yeah, I think Alcoholics Anonymous is a kindergarten because it teaches you these things. First thing you do in Alcoholics Anonymous is, is uh, as soon as you get going, they, they show you to show concern for the next alcoholic. And that's a natural thing for, now, a natural thing for us to work at. We start there being concerned for other people. And from there, this concern can grow in our lives and grow and grow and grow for the rest of our lives. But we're short of concern for other people. We're short of, we're short of tolerance. The alcoholic, the, our, our serenity prayer says, you know, accept, ask us to accept, accept the things we cannot change. You know, and the alcoholic don't accept anything. You know, we, we can't tolerate anything to change comes. And he said we're short of patience. Boy, it's short of patience, God. I hear the alcoholics pray the prayer, God grant me patience, patience, but please grant it now. <laughs> the ability to let life happen to us. And that's very difficult for a selfish, self-centered person to do. To let life happen to him. See, an impatient person, life has to happen on his time. And it never will anyway. So he'll always have frustrations. So patience, the ability to let life happen and not take actions too fast and not get frustrations is almost is a must for a healthy individual. And if we let some of these resentments go, we'll find out that, that patience will come into our lives. You don't have to work at patience. You don't have to work at love. You have to work at tolerance. These things will come if you work against and not act out the things that, that are destroying your life. You have to fight against those things. Well, it's a matter of, of each day, of daily dying. It's a matter of as these things come up each day, we have entered into them and we've been through them. And we can grow and grow for the rest of our lives. And uh, these two steps enable us to continue to grow for the rest. Our lives are based on the use of these two steps. Now with this, you know, it comes an awful lot of responsibility. You know, if you've got, the, if you've got the, these, two, these steps and you're working them in your life, then after you learn to use these steps, if, if you have a problem, if you have some difficulties in, in your life, if you've got some feelings going on in your life, you know, you can't blame any people. You can't blame people anymore now. Because once you learn these steps and learn this program, it ain't their fault anymore that you feel bad. If you feel bad, it happens to be your fault from now on. And that's a tough job. <laughs> if you feel bad, it's your fault. It's something that you are not doing. It's not they anymore. It's you. And as we, we examine these things on a daily basis, uh, and, you know, these things sneak back into our lives. Before we know it, we're right back into some of them. We're acting some of them out. And we've blocked ourselves off from, from the good stuff. Because we, we, we have a right. Whenever we exercise these things, these things will leave our life. So we drive these things out, to, out of our lives. 
on, and, and over and over we can slide back and slide back into the scale gets lopsided again and when it gets lopsided again we stay there for long enough that we become restless and irritable and discontent right and the sanity, from, uh, sanity, uh, sanity of alcoholism returns and we believe we can drink again sometimes and we walk back in the liquor store to take a drink. When we take a drink, we do depress some of these things. You know, boy, and I got, well, I remember when I took a drink, I used to have a lot of patience. <laughs> a lot of tolerance. And just loved everybody. <laughs> Didn't have an enemy in the world. <laughs> you know, but, you know, and then over and over and over the troubles. But a good life, the real balance character, we have to work. And it's our responsibility it's our job. Now once we have ready for seven, he says, when we're ready, we say something like this, my creed, I am I now willing that you should have all of me, the good and the bad. All of me. I pray that you will now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. We have completed step seven. You know, this step, this step is just like losing weight. Now, everybody's into losing weight. I know. I, I need to be into it myself. I seen that guy the other day that did in 400 pounds the other day. I, well. But anyway, everybody's into losing weight. And if you go and look on TV, they got some of these different ads, particularly on TV, and they'll tell you, you can eat all you want on this diet and lose weight. Don't you believe that? <laughs> It's just that the same principle implies changing the mind as changing the body. Now, I, I obviously, the principle is the same. If you want to change the mind, same way you change the human body. If you want to change the body, you want to lose some weight, real, if you want to do some real rage, but you want to have a revolutionary change of the body, the way we do that is not eat what we want to eat and make ourselves eat what we don't want to eat and we will change accordingly. We will change. Same thing. We have to not eat. Now the first thing. We have to not eat the things we like. And, we gotta, and then we've got to make ourselves eat the things we don't like. I know I was one of those things for a while. It's tough, you know. Yeah. I had, man, I didn't know there was so damn much lettuce in the world that week. <laughs> okay. Okay, and that ain't that ain't my thing, you know. See I had to make I had to first not eat the cornbread. <laughs> huh? And make myself eat the lettuce. You know? Okay. I had to work against myself. In the same way we can apply that principle to changing our personality. Not so long ago, and Bell, while I was going through this, Bell bought me a beautiful jogging suit. Boy, I just, for Christmas, she gave me a hint. And uh, it's one of them velour kind, it's real soft, you know, nice for the fall. And I like to, and, and, and she bought me some blue shoes to go with it. Now, the main thing I do when I get home, I put it on and I lay up on the couch and I eat jelly beans in it. <laughs> And I tell her, this thing don't work, you know. <laughs> but I have to be willing to work against myself. And when you work against yourself, you will lose weight based on those two facts. Based on what you let go of and what you make yourself do. Now this, we can come back to our, our lives are in our hands. We could grow and grow and grow for the rest of our life. We have the opportunity, and we are blessed in Alcoholics Anonymous to have a program of living. We have the opportunity as a result of being alcoholics and been through what we've been through. We've found a fantastic program, a fantastic procedure. We can grow and grow and grow in our lives and change and change. We could, where people wouldn't even recognize us. We would be such different personalities. And we could overcome many things in our life. But we have this opportunity. But well, sometimes, you know, we, we have a very great, you know, the greatest handicap of it is, you know, we are in love with what we are. We can't be no better because we like what we are. And we ain't willing to give up nothing. Okay. 
That's the handicap. So it's all about giving up to win. You know, the things that we don't want to give up seem very valuable right now. They seem so valuable to me. Because we really can't compare them to the things that we're missing. To me. What are we missing? You know, well, when you get to get a certain point in your life, sometimes you look back on the things you gave up. Boy, they, they look like nothing. You know, they really look like nothing. But you will never know until you never know the better part of life if you're not really to give up on the little things. The things that you see as some value. And as we begin to practice these two steps... As we said in 4, 5, 6, and 7, in 1, 2, and 3, we put the center of our lives in the correct perspective. In step 3, as a result of 1 and 2, we made a decision to let God be a director of our lives. And that is the center of human life. And that's the, that's the correct position that God, God is supposed to be the director of the human life. For the first time in our lives, in, in steps one, two, and three, we got the center of our lives in the right perspectives. And then we were able to go out to work in our minds. Four, five, six, and seven is talking about ourselves, and I am a product of my mind. So in the, in the, we have the center intact, and now after four, five, six, and seven, we see the things we need. We talk them over with another person. We made these adjustments. Now for the first time, we got the second area of our lives in order. Now, in order to be complete human beings in the last two steps of the program to deal with our outermost dimension, our relationship with others. So in 8 and 9, we're going to, now that this is it, we got, we, we, remember we made a decision, we, we said we're willing to go to any length. So we've got one more hurdle to go. So next week we'll go into steps 8 and 9, the final two steps in the recovery process. <laughs>